Madam Speaker, organs of state are key pillars in Singapore's system of government. Each has an indispensable mission. When allegations are made against organs of state that they cower to personalities, that they are subservient to personalities, then I begin to take those allegations very seriously. Why? I've spent my adult life in organs of state. I happen to have served in four. A judicial officer in the Supreme Court, then posted to the Attorney General's chambers, and thereafter appointments in the state courts and the Supreme Court, and now Parliament. In each office, I have never made the mission of the organ of state subservient to any personality. Never. In every organ of state I have worked in, we work toward a higher mission, the good of a working, functional Singapore for generations of Singaporeans to come. So for me, it is the allegations against the organs of state that have migrated this family issue from the private domain into the sphere of public debate. And so we are here today in Parliament to get to the bottom of these allegations, extract answers, and determine their veracity. Not a pleasant exercise, but one that is required. I will focus on the allegations first, and then will pose a series of questions arising from the allegations. I will focus on the allegations surrounding the misuse of organs of state and abuse of power. I think it is better that I do not weigh in on the aspects of the will because I am a partner at Lee and Lee, not Stanford Law. I am a lawyer at Lee and Lee and declare that for the Hansard record. So let's get on with the allegations. On 29 June at 5.25 p.m., Mr. Lee Sien Yang said this on Facebook. We have serious concerns with Lee Sien Lung's attempt to cover up and whitewash himself in Parliament on 3rd July. We have begun to show evidence of his misuse of his position and influence to drive his personal agenda. This parliamentary session is a forum that again places Sien Lung before his subordinates. They lack both sufficient background and evidence of the numerous instances of abuse and conflicts of interest, many yet to be raised. Historically, few PAP MPs have dared to dissent when the party whip was lifted. There will be no opportunity or adequate time for evidence to be properly drawn together, placed before Parliament and considered. Indeed, it could also be an opportunity to continue to mislead or insinuate under this privilege." Unquote. The allegation infers that there are issues that need to be addressed that may not have, as of yet, surfaced. I do not want to prejudge the situation. It is my hope that whatever can be addressed at this session be addressed. That is, all that has been brought up since 14 June and whatever else Mr. Lee Sien Yang and Dr. Lee Weiling could launch. Deal with the whole lot now, instead of having to reconvene if future and different allegations are made. With that, I would like to ask some questions pertaining to the crux of the allegations. The first set of questions are relating to the government as a whole. Dr. Lee Weiling and Mr. Lee Sien Yang have said, we fear the use of the organs of state against us and Sien Yang's wife, Shuet Fen. My question, is it true or false that the organs of state are being abused to target Mr. Lee Sien Yang and Dr. Li Wei Ling? Second, Dr. Li Wei Ling and Mr. Lee Sien Yang question whether able leaders with independent political legitimacy will be sidelined to ensure Sien Lung's grip on power remains unchallenged." Unquote. Is it true that ensuring the Prime Minister's power remains unchallenged, if that is at all true, trumps independent political legitimacy? To South China Morning Post, SCMP, Mr. Lee Sien Yang has said, I quote, a few of the attacks that we have had to face in private are now public. False accusations, character assassinations, the entire machinery of the Singapore press thrown against us, unquote. Is it true? or false that the government has used Singapore Press to target Dr. Wee Lei Ling, Dr. Wee Lei, Lee Wei Ling and Mr. Lee Sien Yang. Fourth, they continue to say, I quote, they see many upright leaders of quality and integrity throughout the public service who are constrained by Sien Lung's misuse of power 
at the very top, unquote. Is it true that the public service is constrained by the Prime Minister's misuse of power at the top? Fifth, is it true or false that the leadership and direction of government is directed for personal purposes or any other improper purpose? Six, is it true or false that organs of state may be used for personal agendas? The second set of questions is about the cabinet and ministerial committee. Is it true or false that the ministerial committee is merely a facade, that the prime minister is able to influence it one way or the other? Eight, is it true or false that the ministerial committee never told Mr. Lee Sien Yang and Dr. Wee, Lee Wei Ling about options they were exploring? Nine, on 15 June 2017 at 9.25 p.m., Mr. Lee Sien Yang wrote, Sien Lung's public statement to Parliament contradicts the stat deck or statutory declaration he made to his secret committee. It is wrong to lie to Parliament and it is wrong to lie under oath. My question, is it true or false that the Prime Minister lied to Parliament? 10. On 14 June 2017, Mr. Lee Sien Yang said, Sien Lung has asserted to the committee that Lee Kuan Yew would, I quote, accept any decision by the government to preserve 38 Oxley Road, unquote. Carries on by saying, in doing this, Sien Lung has deliberate, deliberately misrepresented Lee Kuan Yew's clear intentions for his own political benefit. He, also, he has also gone back on his own declarations that he would recuse himself from all government decisions involving 38 Oxley, unquote. Is it true or false that the Prime Minister has misguided a ministerial committee to fulfill his own personal purposes. These series of questions are questions that are drawn from the multiple allegations thrown at the organs of state, the Prime Minister, and his office. In short, the insinuations of Mr. Lee's and Dr. Lee's allegations are that there has been an abuse of power and that the organs of state carry out agendas beyond the scope of their mission. Hence, the need for this thorough debate. It is my view that no mission of an organ of state in Singapore should lay subservient to a personality. More so, this house. Its mission to serve the electorate must never be compromised or seen to be compromised. It must be so, for this system of governance must last for generations to come and must be held in high regard by Singaporeans through that course. That's why these allegations must be aired, debated, answered to. Such rigor brings accountability. Such accountability brings trust. Such trust ensures productive leadership. And such productive leadership brings about a working, functional Singapore. Today is an example of the rubric of accountability. Before I close, I want to say this. I've worked with the Prime Minister for a number of years now, and I have never had cause to doubt his integrity and loyalty to the country. It has been, and I trust will always be, Singapore first for him. It is Majula Singapura for him. However, I also have a sacred duty to the constituents I represent and serve. Therefore, it is incumbent on me and my duty as an elected parliamentarian and GPC chair for Home Affairs and Law to ask the tough questions. So the debate has to be robust. But the debate's robustness is not only to advantage all Singaporeans to get to the bottom of the facts, but it is also to show jurisdictions and the press worldwide that we allow facts to speak for themselves in this house. Much has been said by the foreign press about this kerfuffle. New York Times, SCMP, CNN have gleefully covered this. It is my hope that the responses will put an end to the doubts. Then we can steer Singapore back to important affairs of the state. What is of foremost importance for me is the continued good reputation of our system of government and that Singaporeans continue to have confidence in that system, a system built by Mr. Lee Kuan Yew and our founding fathers, 
a system we have a deep duty to advance and to protect.